بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا کلاس اور ٹو دا لیکچر آف افریکن لٹریچر ان دس لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اگین اباؤٹ دی بین آکریز دا فیمشڈ روڈ اینڈ دا ٹاپک آف دس لیکچر از دی پالیٹکس اینڈ ہسٹری ان دا فیمش روڈ As in the previous lecture, we talked about uh, the, uh, the magical realism and uh, uh, the presence of the magical realism in the famished road. Uh, so, uh, in, the, uh, in this lecture, it is about uh, the uh, politics and history uh, uh, of Nigeria, basically, uh, that is present in the famished road. So, Uh, after the uh, uh, like uh, the, the post world war 2 the magical realism uh, a, a widely known post modern nar- narrative mode uh, it been utilized uh, as an amazing uh, weapon uh, you know a tool of decolonizing or the decolonization uh, is used especially by the post colonial authors to present the realities of the post colonial countries um uh, of the world so because of its power of the socio political and uh, uh, cultural subversion and uh, reformation magical realism has been the uh, the literary language of the emergent post colonial world so the taking advantage of uh, the hybrid nature of the magical realist text the post colonial authors Uh, they have attempted to create a third space as Baba talk about the third space uh, uh, like a per- cultural production trespassing the binary opposition between the colonizer and the colonized. So, uh, the, this magical realism, it gave the post colonial writer uh, a chance to observe the world through a third eye and uh, to oppose the cultural imperialism colonialism and neo colonialism of the west so in order to or reevaluate uh, the realities and the possibilities of his native con- country uh, okre he used uh, uh, this uh, uh, non matic uh, non western native mode in the famish road uh, which was awarded Booker Prize, as we have talked um, uh, previously. So, in this work, uh, he fuses the African and uh, uh, Western culture to fight against foreign colonialism and domestic neocolonialism in Nigeria. So, in his distinct type of, um, uh, you know, the um, uh, magical realism, he observes Uh, the realities of uh, uh, new colonial political struggles and uh, stresses the socio political injustice corruption and uh, dysfunctionality in his native political ni- uh, nigeria post colonial nigeria sorry so the exploring uh, uh, while exploring the socio political and uh, historical realities uh, uh, he represents the history of his country through his conception of uh, Amer- African consciousness. So, the concept of history is uh, continuously connected with politics in the novel. So, in this lecture, uh, we are going to reinterpret, like, uh, uh, going to, uh, you know, talk about the ways in which uh, Okre, uh, he reinterprets the African histories altered and misinterpreted by the western colonialism it tries to analyze uh, like how he redreams the post colonial potentials and uh, remedies not only for his post colonial country but also for the entire african uh, continent using the language of uh, myths magic and dreams in the famish road so he, he uses the a uh, technique of uh, magical realism uh, interviewing uh, like a uh, magical element so with the real experience in uh, uh, realistic atmosphere the magic reality in uh, in the work is not something created by the imagination uh, but rather something inherent in west african myths so the magical elements of the novel are in harmony with the 
uh, Nigerian cultural beliefs and values. He, uh, you know, like, uh, he has provided the most sophisticated expression of magical realism in African literature today. So, directly derives the, his material from the culture of uh, West Africa and provides the uh, mixture of uh, Yoruba, uh, uh, Yoruban mythology, West African oral tradition, conventional European realism and Latin American magical realism in his work. So, by mingling or by the amalgamation of the African, Latin American and European narrative methods, he attempts to investigate some certain areas of uh, African consciousness such as the African power of imagination and creation, spirituality, uh, elasticity of aesthetics in African culture. So, as a result of which he can produce a a counter colonialist and counter new colonialist na narrative discourse. Although Ben Okri, as the harbinger of the uh, contemporary Nigerian novel, um, uh, the link between the old and the new uh, he follows the, in the footsteps of the Nigerian authors, uh, other Nigerian authors, uh, Walsh and Kanchi, Chebe, and there are other two. So, while producing is a uh, post colonial author, uh, he separates himself from the aims of his uh, literary precursors who spent great efforts, especially in 1960s and 1970s, uh, to verify the strength and uh, authenticity to African culture over the imperialist colonialist uh, European norms. Uh, uh, like uh, Ben uh, Okre, he argues that uh, there has been too much attribution of the power to the effect of the colonialism or our consciousness and too much has been given to it and uh, we have uh, uh, looked at too much in that direction and for have forgotten about our own static frames. So, uh, we can say that uh, uh, like uh, he focuses on uh, 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 the uh, other things as well. Uh, 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 there is uh, no, quite a long quotation uh, by the Okre uh, and I did not put that in the um, slide. Um, so, the Gnachang or the you know uh, the um, uh, sum up to sum up of that quotation I would say that uh, according to the um, uh, Ben Okri he said that uh, it has been too much that uh, we have talked too much about uh, the uh, colonialism already and uh, uh, how he um, you know uh, the, uh, its impact on ourselves. Uh, he says that uh, uh, like a, a true invasion takes place not when a society has been taken over by another society in terms of its uh, infrastructure, but in terms of its mind and its dreams, its myths and its perception of reality. So this, uh, and uh, for this is that if the perception of the reality has not been fundamentally uh, internally altered, then the experience itself is just transitional. So, there are certain areas of the African consciousness which will remain inviolate and because of the world view it is that uh, uh, makes a people survive. Uh, so, he, uh, he denounces uh, the, the quotation, uh, he, uh, he denounces the uh, over emphasis on colonialism in uh, uh, African post colonial studies and uh, he puts emphasis uh, on the certain inviolate. Uh, uncaptured and uh, untouched areas of the African consciousness, such as the African worldview, African mythologies, the unlimited dream abilities, the imaginative power, the elasticity of aesthetics, and the spirituality in African culture. So, according to him, uh, what should be done in the post colonial studies is not uh, to waste time thinking too much over the damaging effects of the uh, post colonial, uh, sorry, the, of uh, the western colonialism, but rather to try to get a, a better understanding of the African uh, local systems of knowledge to capture the untouched uh, African consciousness and to reflect it through Africans' own aesthetic frames.
so for him although africa has had some failings throughout the history it has its own marvels and being aware of their continent's marvels african people they should try to re reaffirm their place in the world in the post colonial period uh, pointing out okra's idea of uh, the unbroken or the unwallet african consciousness hobby proposes that uh, if uh, per ways of perceiving reality in africa have not been altered by the colonizers and if a way of perceiving reality unites africans present past and culture then okra's work deals with the perceiving reality uh deals with both the historical and the uh, super uh, suppressed uh, historical the universal uh, or like uh, okra's main concern in the famish road uh, is about the history the concept of history and um, history is actually uh the, in the work the history is actually the um the, uh, right from the beginning but uh, uh okris is that uh, i would prefer to say that uh, it is um, uh, like suffering rather than the history so um like uh, the whole human history is an undiscovered for okri it is an undiscovered continent deep in our souls so it seems that the expression the undiscovered continent in the quotation refers to the inviolate african unconsciousness and in the famish road in which the history of the africa is regarded as the weird delirium uh, three attempts to understand and encode this consciousness in uh, opposition to western epistemology and uh, to reconstruct history in order to heal the restlessness and uh, uh, the confusion of the past so uh, like uh, uh, okra's preoccupation with the inviolate african consciousness it leads him to the uh, use of uh, Uh, mythical spiritual and uh, folkloric elements uh, together with the socio political and historical issues so depicting the history and the mythical view points of the rural people um, living in a slum of an african country this work is set uh, at the historical moment of nigeria's independence from the british colonial rule in 1960 and uh, the novel portrays the uh, like uh, the social economic and political situation of nigeria on the verge of self government and uh, investigates the post colonial nigerian society and uh, the failure of the country as an independent nation state through the yoruba myths of the road and the abiko child um, abiko child a child in an unending cycle of birth deaths and rebirths so uh, through the uh, like uh, the uh, the abiko child as aru is the protagonist and the narrator of the novel as a child of the miracles he wanders between the realms of uh, the living and the dead never completely belonging to either of these realms as aru observes the chaotic life of people around and uh, their sufferings poverty and struggle to survive and social and political violence around them and he also so uh, he always keeps in touch with the word of the dead um in this way he encompasses all his past his present and possible future uh, that lives within himself so azaru basically the uh, the continuous births and deaths of azaru it does symbolize the political history of nigeria and uh, the nigerian nation uh, and uh, as azaru is the, on the fifth uh, round to the earth like uh, yeah, yeah, his uh, birth uh, in the work is the fifth one and fifth round 
and uh, this fifth uh, the fifth round is parallel to the five eras of uh, the government in Nigeria uh, the colonial first public republic military rule second republic then again military rule so this uh, depicts the five colonial uh, so five uh, eras of the government and um, uh, by the help of the azaru and his experiences uh, okre uh, scrutinizes the nigerian nation and its chaotic passage from the colonial period to the years of nigeria's independence uh, like um, azaru functions not as not as uh, only as the symbol of nigeria but uh, even of africa as a whole so in the famished word uh, road uh, the abiko children are introduced as a uh, those who lingered in the word seduced by the enunciation of the wonderful events went through life with beautiful and fatty dies carrying within us the music of a lovely and tragic mythology our minds are invaded by invaded by images of the future this is the uh, uh, the, the lines that i uh, you know, took out from the text so the expectation and the optimism of the abiku children for a beautiful future in the this quotation it seems to represent the uh, hopeful situation in nigeria uh, on the brink of the self government so the when the country became independent in 1960 uh, the nigerian people especially the nationalists were awash with the hope of their future and uh, um you were dreaming to turn nigeria into a great nation however uh, during the years uh, following independence many factors such as the um, governmental uh, inaptitude political and uh, institutionalized corruption bad leadership there are many like economic backwardness uh, social injustice these things they caused a certain disillusionment in the country destroying all the hope for the bright future uh, uh like azaru who claims that uh, being born was a shock from which i never recovered so the national independence created a great shock uh, uh, uh from which nigeria could never recover like entering into a vicious cycle, circle the country was ensnared in its own history never accomplishing to be a self sufficient self uh, governing state in the novel uh, azaro's uh, like azaro his ubiku friend ade he functions as a representative of nigeria or africa ade is the son of uh, the carpenter uh, uh, leads a poorer and harsher life than azaro and unlike azaro he is uh, enthusiastic to go back to the world of the unborn comparing himself with the his best friend azaru says that uh, i was a spirit child against uh, 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 against the spirits wanting to live the earth's life and contradiction and uh, 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 they wanted to leave so um, like i wanted the liberty of limitations uh, to have to find or create a new road from which uh, from this one which is so hungry this road of our refusal to be i was not necessarily the stronger one it may be easier to live with the earth's boundaries than to be free in infinity so the azaro and are they they become the representative of the two different versions versions of nigeria are they seems to be the uh, symbol of nigeria as a neglected uh disregarded frustrated and torn apart country while azaru he symbolizes uh, uh, nigeria as a country which still struggles to survive for all misfortunes difficulties uh, sufferings and failures so through azaru okre offers that the country can emerge into harmony if people can remember their roots and keep the faith Uh, so at the end of the famished road nigerian nation directly as an abiko nation through ades prophecy 
when he is about to turn to the spirit world uh, he foretells uh, a future which is embedded in sorrow violence cruelty cruelty blindness starvation coups wars and catastrophe like as our uh, are they recommends that all these sufferings and uh, disasters they should not frighten azaru or make him feel um uh, uh, desperate because he will always some uh, find something to struggle for so azaru is the picture of nigeria which is struggling which wants to live adi is the picture of nigeria which has given up or the quitting so he says adi says that uh, uh no matter what happens azaru will survive he will um, keep on surviving uh, all the um, uh, misfortunes so through azaru uh okre uh, like uh, um, offers that uh, um country can emerge into harmony if the people can remember their roots and keep the faith uh like this uh, uh sorry as adi was saying that uh, he will keep on surviving uh, he was in uh, adi encourages azaru saying that a country is an abiku country like the spirit child it keeps coming and going one day it will decide to remain it will become strong so for adi if nigeria can overcome its chaotic history in present condition and rejects rejects his uh, abiku destiny it will accomplish uh, to survive just like azaru who has preferred to remain in the world of the living break, breaking the pact with the uh, spirit world as uh, so for okay uh, the uh, job of making the nigerian nation survive is on the hands or is in the hands of the nigerian people and he goes on saying that all nations are children ours too was an abikucha nation a spirit child nation one that keeps being reborn and after each rebirth come blood and betrayals and the child of our will refuses to stay till we have made a uh, sacrifice and displayed our serious intent to bear the weight of a unique destiny so uh, uh, okre says that in order to keep their country alive the nigerian people they should make favorable sacrifices for their country like they ha- have to sharpen their awareness towards uh, uh, africa's uh, uh, marvelous capacities and evaluate their history consciously so um, they must uh, like uh, uh, okre says that they must be aware that only in this way they can break the vicious circle in which nigeria was kept captured he says that uh, the optimism for the future should go on despite all misfortunes and sufferings okra says that africa has an incredible capacity to not die and not to be destroyed and not be destroyed so uh, it is that unlike china that was always unified and has the, this great wall to prevent invasion africa had no great wall uh, yet it manages to remain unique it's uh, uh, things like that the resilience of the spirit uh, the great dreaming capacities the imaginative frames uh, that are visible in art and uh, an art that has not remotely been understood so all these things are within the terrain of uh, uh, terrain of for the book uh, they're not different things it's just one subject like the famish road so he okre he just um, uh, takes advantage of the west african myth of the road along with the myth of abiku children so these two myths they go hand in hand throughout the novel and azaru and art they they function as the symbols of nigeria uh, by extension uh, the whole Ni- african continent in the uh uh throws of becoming and recovering from the effects of bygone colonialism so while the rand uh, road stands for nigerian uh, or the west african struggle to survive uh he uses myths uh, myth of the road to um, 
uh, we may say that uh, uh, to reflect several different meanings. So, in some places the 200 years of uh, um, African history is symbolized through the metaphor of the road and in some others the road symbolizes Nigerian history beginning from pre-colonial times until the present day. So, at the beginning of the uh, novel the ro road it originated from a river <coughs> sorry uh, it is, uh, is introduced in its pre-colonial condition and uh, becomes a vehicle to uh, demonstrate the African traditions and wisdom of African culture. So, this road it is always uh, uh, hungry as it has lost its African origin and connection with the spirit world. So, towards the end of the novel the myth of the road it starts to represent Nigeria. So, in one of uh, the vision of the uh, or clay we can say that uh, Azaro sees uh, a lovely jewel road bu being built and the road has been built for 2000 years but is still not only 2 feet long. So, when a generation destroys the road a new generation attempts to rebuild it. Uh, so, the reason that is explained by the uh, three headed spirit. The three headed uh, spirit in the work uh, says that um, because each uh, new generation begins with nothing and uh, with everything they know all the earlier mistakes. They may not know uh, that they know, but they do. So, they know the early plans, the original intentions, the earliest dreams. So, each generation has to reconnect the origins for themselves. So, nothing can destroy except themselves. Uh, so, three headed spirit says that nothing can destroy the people except themselves, uh, uh, their own selves and they will never finish the road that is their soul and they do not know it. So, uh, the, um, the ro road building or uh, the road being built it seems to represent the uh, 200 years of uh, uh, recorded African history. So, the African people they struggle in vain to construct their history and uh, which was being uh, you know the injured by the enslavement of uh, African notables. The colonialism by the western imperialist adventures and neo colonialism by the new African oppress, uh, oppressors. The because of all the uh, years of the enslavement like uh, the, uh, the it is the longest history uh, who faced enslavement uh, the uh, history of the Nigeria. None other nation uh, uh, except the African nations uh, face such kind of things. So, uh, because of the 100 years of enslavement, the colonialism, neo colonialism, and more significantly, the uh, African slave mentality, the African people they could not be successful in the construction of the national consciousness or social justice or political equality and technological and economic development. And uh, because of all the reasons, uh, okay, he does not put all the blame uh, on the vast forest continuous intrusion, um, uh, but he also criticized the African people. He says that the road was young, but its hunger was old and its hunger had been reopened. Like towards the end of the novel, uh, the character a uh, dad uh, who is named as dad in the work, uh, we can uh, we do not know the, uh, the particular name, uh, but he is called as dad in the work uh, who is the Azaru's father. He becomes uh, 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 Okre's vehicle to criticize his own people like Azaru's father he is whenever he speaks he speaks truth and um, uh, you know he does criticize uh, like uh, he accuses people of uh, 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 people of Nigeria 
uh, and he does uh, you know uh, depict like uh, he accuses them of the evil condition around their, their laziness, uh, cowardice and their selfishness. Uh, so uh, in other words, the, uh, Ben Okri was criticizing his people of these malices. The, the character of dad, he reproaches people because of their uh, forgetfulness and lack of historical consciousness. He says that the African people, they easily forget what they have experienced and uh, like uh, that it is impossible for them to learn from their own past experiences. Their uh, unforgetfulness is the real cause of their slow improvement and development. So, the dad, he urges, he urges his people uh, or uh, to lift themselves up uh, and their thoughts up, thoughts up and uh, he urges them to think differently and uh, remember uh, and uh, he uh, urges them to remember that uh, they are free from uh, uh, everything and uh, they have the power, they have the power to transform themselves and, uh, uh, and they have the uh, you know they have the will to transform their hunger into the power. So, uh, like uh, uh, he says that the old ways are the best and must be followed to solve the present problems such as the social and political conflicts. conflicts. Uh, but he says that we should also focus on the new ways like African wisdom, tradition and philosophy will provide the power and knowledge and the African people required to rebuild their own road and to open new roads of the future. He says that in uh, uh, like um, instead of uh, focusing on the uh, new imperialist exploitation or the on uh, the uh, western people rather African people should focus on their own history and uh, they should learn from the their own history their own tradition uh, the uh, their own philosophy or the wisdom of their own people the, basically through the uh, the oration of the character of uh, dad okre uh, basically presents his socialist optimistic view of the nigeria or africa so the speech that the uh, dad uh, expresses uh, like uh, for the you know the urgent need for a new african society it was basically uh, the okra's own uh, optimistic view and uh, it is the okra's uh, um, like uh, the african uh, for uh, it was for okra that uh, he uh, felt the uh, urge or the need uh, for a new african society like constituted by the new citizens uh, who have accomplished self-actualization, self-education, uh, self-realization, self-analysis, everything or magical perceptions or uh, spiritual insights. So, for him, the, uh, he says that God is hungry for, our, uh, for us to grow. He must look at the world with new eyes. We must uh, look at ourselves differently. We are freer than we think. We can redream this world and can and make the dream real. Human beings are gods hidden from themselves. Our hunger ch can change the world, make it better, sweeter. So this quotation, in this quotation, basically, uh, the Okri's idea of redreaming stands out as a key concept at the end of the no novel. Like uh, he says that the African people have a lot to learn from their power of redreaming in the face of uh, you know the um, hazardous effects of the colonialism. Uh, he further says that the real quarrel of uh, the oppressed is uh, not with the oppressor. Uh, but he says that uh, the real truth they have to face is the truth about their own selves and uh, hope and uh, striving have magic in them and uh, those who have much to strive for much to resolve and overcome and redream may well be luckier than they think 
in this quotation and the in other is uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the Van Okri, he says that those who have, gain, who have gained the power of redeeming are luckier mm, than the those who get stuck in the past. As uh, I mentioned that uh, he denounces uh, uh, the impacts of the uh, like uh, about uh, talking about uh, the colonialism and again and again. That is why he is uh, showing hope uh, at the end of the uh, work and uh, he says that whosoever gets power of redeeming um, is the luckier person and uh, he can change the um, uh, himself or he can change the uh, people around himself. So this is that remembering the past histories and uh, redeeming the possibilities for Africa can be the best remedy to remember uh, African national consciousness. So at the uh, from the beginning, he didn't uh, criticize the uh, the colonialism. Rather, he was criticizing the people of. Uh, uh, Nigeria or the people of Africa like in the uh, form of the rich pa party of the rich party of the poor and uh, he also uh, and uh, the element of the magic basically the element of the hope and uh, he says that whosoever have that mal has that magic whosoever knows about that magic it means he knows how to survive he can survive he can change everything like Azaru Madam Koto the, the Azaru's dad they uh, they all knew that magic like uh, uh, not the magic rather they uh, wanted to survive and uh, uh, he resembles the nigerian nation with the azaru who, who wants to survive in the this era and who keeps on struggling like uh, the uh, the uh, back and forth movement of azaru in the spirit world and the world of the dead and in the uh, on earth it shows that uh, the uh, the continuous effort of the nigerian people uh, because they want to survive so to conclude we can uh, say that the um, like um, Mm, uh, the famish road as an example of the post colonial magical realism fiction realist fiction the ben O'Kray's, he uh, socio political uses it as the socio political weapon to fight against the uh, imperial colonial and uh, neo colonial forces as well as the social economic and cultural corruption and to provide change and improvement so, taking advantage of the uh, subversive uh, power of the magical realism, the novel merges the literary tradition of uh, Africa, Europe and Latin America with the philanthropic and universal view through the local. Uh, so, basically uh, the uh, Azaros, the, um, sorry, the uh, the magical realism, it is function as Azaro third eye, which suddenly opens up and uh, uh, you know, f f uh, like uh, um, in the center of the forehead and makes him perceive the word brighter and better. So the third, the third eye that is basically uh, the attempt to free the human mind from all the restrictions to think out of the box to look out of the box, to monitor the world from a different perspective, to uncover uh, hidden facts, to highlight social and political reality and to document history. So uh, reflecting uh, the traumatic condition of Nigeria on the eve of independence, the, um, the uh, famish road, it analyzes the chaos that was uh, among in the country among the people and uh, like uh, while carrying uh, the novel from traumatic uh, atmosphere of post colonial Nigeria to optimistic dreams of the future the main concern of the okre uh, it becomes myths history and politics so if the if, uh, if history means suffering of the people uh, in Okre understanding, then myth becomes the best remedy uh, for the Nigerian African people suffering. And um, 
to disentangle the energies hidden in the mythic and spiritual aspects of uh, 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 you know African history. Uh, he directly the man okay, he directly plumps the depths of the urban mythology folk tales legends and beliefs and uh, uh, through the use of these myths he uh, he attempts to investigate um, uh, the past of nigeria uh, past histories or uh, uh, to give moral lessons to the african people as at the end he gave uh, uh, through the uh, like uh, optimistic speech of the dad uh, he give he gives hope to the uh, african people uh, that uh, uh, he says that uh, it is the african people who can satisfy their hun uh, their hunger by rediscovering uh, dis the possibilities of imagination and spirituality bur buried in the unbroken African consciousness and uh, he further says that the African people they have to think in a different way like they have to overcome their forgetfulness and uh, cowardness and uh, they, they have to redream their past to heal their future so it is uh, said that uh, in order to Oh, make the, uh, your future and the present uh, uh, good you have to leave your past behind so th the same thing is uh, uh, okay saying that uh, in order to have a better future you have to redream your past so this is the only way of uh, uh, solving the crisis of democracy in Nigeria Africa and moreover throughout in this modern world so in this work basically he was just trying to give hope to the people and trying to oh, make aware uh, uh, make a realization to the people that they have to leave their past behind in order to uh, make their future perfect or better they have to leave their past behind they have to stop lamenting they have to open up their minds they have to look into their consciousness so uh, this is the basically the the final talk of the uh, the work that uh, what he was trying to depict by depicting the politics and uh, uh, history of Nigeria in the famished road. So I have put references there here uh, where from where I collected this data. Uh, you can um, for further uh, you can search on your own and you can also visit these uh, references and uh, for now this is all thank you so much for your patience and stay blessed